My interest in pre-modern manuscripts was primarily sparked in response to my curiosity to learn about pictorial vernacular, which was not necessarily from a Western painting canon. But what got me deeply hooked was understanding how European colonial legacy shaped manuscript painting's fate. Many important historical paintings reside in collections of many Western museums. So I often see myself as a detective digging into those archives. That for me is very critical as an artist very research-driven engagement with a language and a vernacular that doesn't necessarily sit comfortably in the Western painting canon. Shazer Sikander is a major artist who, using a century-old tradition of manuscript painting, has transformed it to give it profound relevance in the contemporary world. Morgan has for some years been devoted to collecting modern and contemporary works on paper, and Sikander was an artist that we had in our sights pretty early on. Someone who is so immersed in that tradition of manuscript painting as Sikander is, so knowledgeable and then also so brave in a way and courageous in taking this venerable tradition and exploring very, very different topical, difficult themes within it. This exhibition is devoted to the first 15 years of her career. It's a very important period because it's in fact during the time when she was a student that she had this sort of radical vision that she could use the manuscript tradition to convey a message. From the start, her desire to make art was not essentially an aesthetic decision, but something more critical, more political. The exhibition covers four different cities, Lahore, Providence, Houston, and New York, the four cities where I lived and created the work from 1987 to almost 2002, 2003, but very much a focus on the 1990s. There's a lot of shift happening. Of course, there's 9-11, but also I think how mercurial the identity is the wars that are unfolding and the fetishization of the Muslim woman and how I wanted to kind of critique that and resist it. So some of the iconography emerges from that type of resistance. Polarizing dichotomies have long existed and that's what I was sort of digging at, how to deconstruct such exclusionary racial representations and tell richer stories. Throughout the 90s, while I was making these very detailed paintings, I was also making large installations that were often this combination of painting directly on the wall as well as on paper. So this sort of playfulness was a strategy that starts to emerge where I can bring a language born out of the physical nature of material. And at the same time, I can tap into all my concerns about empire, language, colonial histories, identity, sexuality, gender. These are interlinking themes that all of us experience, and they are not necessarily culturally specific. They are part of human identity.